everyone and welcome back to the D Hard House. My name is Alicia and I am your host of this crafty podcast here on YouTube. I am not joined today by my usual co-host Marjorie, my five-year-old black Labrador. Uh, she is enjoying some rest time in the living room after her long walk this morning. So. <laughs> Uh, and I just didn't want to deal with her whining halfway through the recording to leave the room. So, yeah, she's over there. So, it is August 31st. It's the end of the month. And that means summer is almost over, which means fall quarter is going to begin soon. And I really need to catch you folks up on what I have been crafting over the summer. Because it's been a while. So first off, um, let me just say that teaching, uh, I'm a college math professor, by the way, and teaching online, which I had to do during the pandemic, quarantine, that whole situation of 2020 um, and early 2021, that whole experience drained my energy for creating videos for this channel because I had to create videos and host live virtual sessions and it was a lot of time I was spending in front of the computer looking at screens, recording, editing, adding captions. It, I mean, I, it, my job transformed into something different for a year year and a half and it, it took away my creative juices and energy and brain space for this channel <laughs> to be honest and I'm hoping that as we transition back on campus um, and I do more live in-person things again with my students that that energy for creating online content uh, would we'll be able to come back to this channel. I will still have to create online content for my job, uh, but hopefully not as much as this last school year uh, required. So, yay. <laughs> so here's my plan for the channel. Now that it's fall is like New Year's for me, because I'm a teacher, fall quarter uh, or fall semester, uh, here we're on quarters, uh, but it's it's a new school year. You know, I've, I've had a break over the summer. I've been able to relax, recharge my batteries, think of new things I want to try, tweaking things, and it just feels like a fresh start. So for me, fall is like New Year's where I get to make all these goals and plans and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> so here's my plan for the channel. I like to get back into recording regularly and I think what I can commit to is our monthly videos at, at the minimum. <laughs> so monthly videos about what I've been working on. So we're going to start here with August. So I'm going to share with you the things that I finished during the month of August projects I've been working on, knitting, crochet, spinning, cross stitch, whatever, right? Um, and also sharing things that are still in progress, maybe some goals, plans, etc. cetera. Um, and then also other videos will include like tutorials for the patterns that I write. So I have a few tutorials in the works right now that I'm recording as I knit through the objects. And then those videos will also excuse me, get released to the channel. Um, especially if it's a free pattern, the video will be accessible to everybody. Uh, and if it's a paid for pattern, the videos are gonna depend on how much I reveal. Uh, the videos may be private, so if you buy the pattern, you get a link to the video, otherwise you won't even know that that video exists, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, so. That's the plan. So this is going to be kind of a big episode, I think, 
because I'm starting this new format. I've quite a few things to catch you up on other than just what I've made in August. <laughs> so, plus, stick around. There's going to be an opportunity for you to win a prize. There's going to be a giveaway on this channel. So, make sure you stick around till the, I think the end, maybe. You'll just have to watch this video to figure out when I announce this giveaway and what you have to do to win the prize and what the prize is. Okay. <laughs> By the way, I am drinking um, some pumpkin spice latte coffee. Um, the fall themed flavors of coffee were on sale at the store and I wanted pumpkin spice. So I'm treating myself uh, to some afternoon. Nope, it's still morning. <laughs> it feels like afternoon. Um, but uh, yeah, a little bit of pumpkin spice coffee. It's delicious. I just love it. I'm definitely in the mood for fall. Um, here in the Pacific Northwest, I live in the Seattle area in Washington state and it's been cool these last couple of days like uh, we went to a baseball game last night and it got down into the 60s and the high 50s that's Fahrenheit and you know I got to put on a hand knit sweater and a jacket and I'm, it just makes me really excited for fall things are cooling off um, I have a garden in the backyard, the pumpkins are turning orange, like, oh, it's getting there. So, I'm excited. Anyway, so let's start with projects I finished in the month of August. Now, I may not have started them in August. These are things that I finished in August. So, the first uh, finished object I'm going to show you is the biggest one. <laughs> It is a baby blanket and it's my favorite one so far that I have knit. So let me just stand up and show you the whole blanket and then I'll share with you the yarn and other information. <laughs> oh my gosh, I just love it. So it's got this brown corner mixed with uh, like a dark navy color and then it goes into this like gold with a little bit lighter navy into some teal with some green and blue and gray and it's just uh, I love the color combinations. I think it looks so cool. So the yarn that I used is um, Lion Brand Mandala and I used two skeins. Uh, one, so I'll put a picture up here, uh, one of the skeins is called Spirit and I believe that's the blue and gray one and the other skein is dragon <laughs> and that's with the browns and blues and what I did is I striped them so uh, knit in rows so I do two rows in one color two rows in another two rows in the first color two rows in the second and just kept alternating so it would blend the self-striping yarn together throughout the blanket. Um, the blanket is three feet by three feet. It's a square, it's a corner to corner blanket, and it's a pattern that I am creating a tutorial video for. It will be a free pattern um, available. It's just super easy <laughs> and quick and I love it. So. Yeah, that's my first finished object, about a thousand yards. Um, I did find out 
after reading the label, pro tip, read yarn labels. Um, this is not worsted weight yarn. This is actually, um, on the tag it says a three, which is like a sport weight or DK. Um, so I had knit a baby blanket earlier in the year where I mixed one of these with a red heart skein, which is worsted weight. And the edges are all wonky. <laughs> They're not straight on the blanket. And it's because I use two different weights of yarn. So yeah, should have read the yarn label. This is not worsted weight yarn. <laughs> It's, it seems like it is, but it's not. So yeah, that's my first finished object is a baby blanket. I used US size seven needles and I went for three feet by three feet. Uh, I also weighed the skeins so that I would make sure that I wasn't gonna run out of yarn. So knitting it corner to corner, um, I made sure when I got to the halfway point on that longest diagonal that I had at least half the skein left. And I do have some leftovers, so it's all good. But yeah, that's my first finished object of August. My second finished object is a pair of socks. <laughs> Um, so these are knit out of Knit Picks uh, Stroll yarn, and I bought this colorway back when I lived in Texas, and pretty close to the start of this podcast, actually. So I don't remember the name of this colorway. Um, I know I bought it alongside a colorway called Make Believe, which has some greens in it. This is not Make Believe. I can't remember. <laughs> and I bought this up like a year ago and I have no idea where the tag is. So uh, it's a Knit Picks Stroll colorway. It has uh, purples and um, this beautiful light blue, um, like a burgundy color, uh, and I think it just looks really nice. Uh, I did use a solid purple, also nitpick stroll, for the cuff, heel, and toe, and it pretty well matches this colorway. <laughs> I think I bought them separately these two colors um but it does make sense that since they're both from nitpicks on the stroll base that they would go together so yeah uh the pattern is another one of my designs that's going to be released probably next month in september um i've got this eyelet detail running down uh, each side of the leg and also down the side of the foot. Yep. So I'm working on another pair of these um, alongside the, the pattern write up, sort of test knitting my own pattern. Um, and also I wanted to see this pattern on a more solid yarn. Um, but I think it does work nicely with this uh, variegated colorway as well. And I think it would work well with self-striping also. <laughs> so yeah, so these are a finished pair of socks. Uh, I used US size one needles, which are my favorite. I used two 16 inch circulars to do like a magic loop method. I like the two 16 inch circulars, um, the two separate needles that I'm not fidgeting with the magic loop, trying to get the loop to not twist on itself. If you've knit magic loop socks, you know what I'm talking about where that cable can get kind of twisted and it's awkward. <laughs> I still love magic loop, but sometimes it's just nice to have two separate needles. So these are going to be a gift for a family member. Shh, don't say anything. 
Uh, but now that they are finished, they've been photographed and weighed, I can now put them in the gift pile. My next finished object <laughs> is um, I'm gonna really show you guys that I'm ready for fall. So <laughs> I knit up a couple of pumpkins and this one still needs its stem. Um, but yes, this is another pattern I would like to release <laughs> next month. Uh, so this one's a little, um, in my opinion, more pumpkin-y because it's not like a ball. This one's more like a ball, but still fun. So uh, what I did is knit it from the bottom up and I left a hole at the top to put a stick in. So this is a wooden stick and I've got a little ribbon tied around it. I do not have like any ribbon. No, this is ribbon from like a gift somebody gave me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'd like to get some like Buffalo check ribbon. Um, I do have some, um, uh, what's that called? Like a burlap fabric, um, that I can cut into a strip. In fact, I use some of it. I've got a little wreath hanging on the window here. Um, cut the burlap into a strip and then under the sewing machine, sew along the edges to kind of stop the fraying a bit. And that would be cute as well. Um, but yeah, so what I need to do is put a stick in here and get um, some nice ribbon to tie a bow. And so I have some sticks that I gathered on our last <laughs> camping trip. Um, I would really want to look for sticks that have like a curve in it. This is the closest one I could find. Um, it's a little too tall for the pumpkin, unless I want to have it like stuck all the way down in there. Yeah. So I think what I'm going to do is get um, Michael, my husband, to help me um, take a handsaw and cut these, cut these in half because they're just, I mean, look at that. They're too tall. I don't really want to shove them like all the way down in the pumpkin. I could. Uh, but if I cut them in half, then I could get twice as many pumpkins uh, stems out of this. So, but yeah, I'm just going to stick a stick in here and tie a, a bow around it. So, but yeah, I'd like to make uh, a few more. Excuse me, maybe a white, a white one, maybe a brown one. I don't know. Just play with, play with the colors. But yeah. That's fun. So I did use uh, Worst of Weight yarn, uh, just some orange uh, Worst of Weight yarn that I have in my stash. And you can see I put some cables on it. I used US size six needles. Um, I wanted a little tighter gauge than um, like the uh, blanket knitting that I do. So I went with a six instead of a seven. And yeah, I like it. I like how it turned out. I really like the top, how um, the cables come together. Anyway, yeah, so pumpkins, of course. And then my, is this my last finished object? Yeah, that's not bad, I guess. My last finished object is some spinning. <laughs> Uh, so this yarn has been on this spinning wheel. I have an Ashford, Ashford, excuse me, hair in my mouth. I have an Ashford traditional wheel. It is my only spinning wheel. Uh, I bought this several years ago, back when I lived in Texas, at a flea market. Used, really cheap. Um, and I love it. Uh, the only things I've had to do to this wheel are uh, replace the drive band, which I used um, just cotton um, 
sugar and cream, whatever, kind of just cotton you can knit dishcloths out of from Walmart, basically. Um, that's what I put on the dry band. And then what was the other thing? Oh yeah, the, um, there's a bolt, I guess bolt might be the right word, in the middle of the wheel here that was loose. And so when you'd push the pedal, it would, wouldn't quite, it would slip. Like at the bottom, it would slip. And um, anyway, I had to adjust where that bolt was. I'd pushed it in too far. The problem got worse. Pulled it out too far. <laughs> the problem was still, I had to find that Goldilocks region of where to put that bolt as far as how deep to tap it in. Um, and now it's it's perfect. It's, it's spins beautifully. Anyway, um, so this is some Shetland fiber uh, that I had purchased from a local in Tacoma, uh, just off of Facebook. He posted pictures. I think I spent $20 and got a trash bag full of dirty Shetland wool and I brought it home, washed it. I've been combing it. I did my color series, my color study out of this wool. Um, I still have lots. <laughs> two more bags of wool, three more bags of wool that I also bought off of Facebook from other folks. Anyway, so this has been on the spinning wheel since um, before we moved into our home here. So when we moved to Washington, we were living in Fife and I had started this project. I had finished a skein already. Uh, this was on the spinning wheel. We were house hunting. We finally found this home, made an offer, and then we had to start packing. <laughs> and so this just sat on the spinning wheel for, uh, we bought our home last year in October. We started packing around this time, August, September. Um, so yeah, this has been on the wheel just languishing for a year. Uh, and I finally finished it. I finished it in a day, this game. Um, yeah, so it is 100% Shetland wool, uh, completely natural. I did not dye uh, this fiber. And it's a two-ply. I have here, oh, I did a comb, uh, comb prep. And I spun it. I started spinning it worsted and then I was thinking well maybe I was trying to spin woolen I can't remember because I didn't write it down um, but this does not quite match the first skein I spun a year ago and I didn't leave notes for myself so I have no idea what uh, exactly I was doing I know that I wanted to use this in a sweater but these two skeins don't match. Um, this skein is kind of overspun, in my opinion. Oh yeah, there's a twisty. Oh, you can't see that. There's a twisty bit. See that? I think I overspun this. Uh, but yeah, this is closer to a lace weight than a fingering weight. And I wanted to go for a fingering weight. In fact, let me grab that first skein. So here's the one that I completed last year. And this one's like as close to perfect as I think I could possibly get. Um, it is fingering weight. It is not overspun. It's beautiful. And then this one is more of a lace weight. And you can see, I think you can see. It's thinner. And yeah, I think I was probably trying to go for woolen because it seems fluffier, you know? But because I spun like half of this worsted style, I think that added to this being so much thinner because worsted spinning squishes out the air while woolen spinning 
uh, keeps the fluffiness, keeps the air in there. So, oopsie. But, um, you know, another tip, leave, write notes, right? I need to have like a spinning notebook that I write notes in on what I am doing, right? Uh, but yes, I finished this. So this is a two ply and this is 199 yards, uh, 46 grams of Shetland wool. And we'll see what I do with it. I have no idea now. <laughs> no idea. Okay, so those are the projects that I finished in the month of August. But I also acquired some new things during the month of August. So I want to share those with you. Um, first of all, I bought a couple of braids from Wild Wool, is it Wild Wool Farm? I think. Uh, I will definitely have all the information correct in the description box below. <laughs> uh, but yes, here is one braid. And I bought these off of Facebook, off her um, Arlene's group on Facebook. So these colorways don't have names, <laughs> at least not that I'm aware of. Uh, but this is on her panda base, which is, um, I, wrote, I wrote it down here. Oh yeah, Wild Wolf Arms, I even wrote it here. Um, they did not come with labels, so I wrote my own. So this is from, can you see that? Wild Wolf Arms. It is 60% Superwash Merino, 30% Bamboo, and 10% Nylon. So I got this one. It's got this beautiful golden yellow, some purple, some blue. Um, and I'd really like to spin this into socks for myself. So I'd like to spin a fingering white yarn and knit socks out of it for me. My favorite color is yellow and I love this golden, almost orange kind of yellow. That's my favorite. Uh, excuse me, very warm and I love it. So this is for me and then obviously I bought it and then I bought on the same base. So another panda base that's superwash, merino, bamboo, and nylon. This one keeps falling apart. <laughs> By falling apart, I mean unrolling here. One sec. Just do my own little roll here. There we go. And then I got this one, which has more brown and blue and some green. It's almost like the green is from mixture from colors mixing because it's got a little bit of that gold in there that same gold it's beautiful so I feel like these two coordinate nicely and if I wanted to be greedy I would spin this for like a sweater for myself I'd probably need one more braid but I'm not gonna be greedy and I want to spin these this into fingering weight yarn for socks for my husband because I think that'd be fun. So so I got one with more blues and browns kind of up his um, colorway area. He likes blue is his favorite color. Um, anyway, yeah, I love it. It's so cool. So these are, um, oh, I didn't write. Oh yeah, I did. I weighed them. This, uh, this braid is 126 grams, which is almost four and a half ounces. And this braid is, uh, 120 grams, which is like four and a quarter ounces. Yeah, I'm excited. So I acquired those. I have spinning aspirations. And then I also, <laughs> um, I've been browsing Instagram through all of the beautiful photographs that people take. And um, 
one of my friends down in Texas also has been spinning a lot with supported spindles. And I thought um, that I wanted to give it a try. So I ordered um, a supported spindle with a cup to try some supported spinning. I've never done it before. Um, I have a drop spindle, which I'll be showing you here soon, has a project on it. Uh, but I have not done supported before, so I imagine it will feel a little different. But I'm excited to try. I've been seeing lots of photographs with support spindles full of beautiful fiber and I really wanted it so so I ordered this I will link the um, Etsy shop where I bought this uh, down below in the description box it is um, ah, yes art of Siberia no okay uh, it's very light super light and it has a nice um, finish on it it's very smooth all of this is very smooth um, there are no rough bits on this anywhere and I'm just really excited. I expected this to weigh a little bit more <laughs> but it's so light like I feel like this is hollow it's so light um, but yeah I'm excited so we'll see how it goes. I do still have projects in the works just because it's the end of the month doesn't mean I finished everything. <laughs> I still have um, other projects going on so the first one I'm going to show you is another baby blanket. Uh, this is one that I'm, uh, now that I've knit a couple of them, I'm creating a tutorial video. So this is the blanket that you will see me creating in the video. So I'm showing you the back side. This side shows the stripes really nicely. So I've just made it past the middle of the blanket where you go from increasing to decreasing. Yay. Uh, it's fun to watch that corner emerge. But, oh, can I show this to you? It's more difficult when it's still connected to the skeins. Ah. But yeah, so... <laughs> I made a few like blue blankets. I needed some more uh, warm colors, not just cool colors. So I have um, some pinks and yellows and purple. There's even a little bit of green in here and gray. Uh, this one's going to be really fun. So these two skeins are um, Cupid and Valkyrie. And again, these are Lion Brand Mandala yarn uh, that I just got from Joann's. Uh, and I'm just striping them together and it's really fun. So uh, this project, I imagine I'll finish in the next week or so um, and then be able to post a pattern and a tutorial video to go along with it, which will be nice. I also have way over here in a Halloween bag because again I'm ready for fall uh, I have more socks so just like the purple ones that I showed you oh, hang on <laughs> this one I am doing magic loop and I do have to manage the loop uh, so just like the purple socks there, I'm knitting another pair. Um, and I wanted a dark color because uh, my skin is so light. Uh, if I have a dark color for the yarn, then my light skin will uh, show through the eyelets. So I'll get that contrast. So I am past the heel. Okay, I'll show you this side. 
I'm past the heel. Um, I, I think I just finished the gusset decreases, I believe. I will have to count my stitches. But um, yeah, this black yarn I used in my uh, so faded sweater and I have exactly 50 grams <laughs> so uh, I need to make these socks a bit short so that I can actually get two socks and so I'm also using um, uh, other colors for the cuff heel and toe to make those 50 grams go a little bit further but uh, these colors I don't have enough of either. I have like 12 grams of this and 13 grams of the green. So I'm mixing and matching, but I think it's going to look really cool. And I think it goes nicely with this bag. So I'm all ready for fall with my projects. Um, excited to watch Halloween movies. Yeah. So these are in the works. This is the first sock. I have not started the second sock yet. I don't know why, but this loop, man, on the magic loop, is just bugging me. So I might switch needles for the second sock, even though that's not good form because your tools do affect your work. So I'll probably just stick with it. But yeah, so that's um, in progress. And then my last project uh, is a spinning project. And that's here on my Turkish drop spindle. And I'm spinning some green fiber. This is Merino. 100% merino. Um, I bought this braid off of Etsy two years ago, shortly after we moved to Washington. Um, I don't remember the name of the shop. If I can find it, I will link it in the description box. Uh, but I bought a green braid and like a purpley blue braid as well. Um, so I have, I had previously spun one ounce of this fiber. So this is the second ounce. I still have this left in that ounce. So I'm getting there. I'm probably halfway. I could weigh this and figure out if I'm halfway, but no need for that. So I'm having fun with that. Um, I'm going to spin this the same as the first ounce. So what I'm doing is spinning um, singles on here. I don't think I have autofocus set up. It's part of the problem. <laughs> so I'm spinning singles on here. I'll make this whole turtle, right? The ball, uh, wound on here with the whole ounce of fiber. Um, then I will take this off and I will make a two ply where I pull one of the plies from the outside of the turtle, the other ply from the inside of the turtle. And so what I like about doing that is that I won't have any extras, right? So if I spin one turtle or ball, I spin one ball of singles and another ball of singles, chances are the they're not going to be the same amount of yardage and one ball will have more yardage than the other. And then there'll be this leftover bit that I won't know what to do with. So if I do it this way, there's no leftover because it will fly onto itself completely from end to end. So that's my plan. Um, I've already done it once, so I know it works <laughs> and I know how to do it. And so I'll do it again and it'll be fun. And I have a, no plan uh, at this point for what this uh, yarn will become. Could be a hat, could be a scarf, could be 
used in color work in a sweater? I have no idea. Um, so we'll see. But uh, yeah, I'm keeping this in one of my super simple flat bags. It has no zippers, buttons, snaps, nothing that's going to snag the fiber. Um, it's completely open, uh, hangs over my arm. And so I can have my fiber in this bag while I'm spinning. Uh, it's all right here with me. And like I said, the fiber is not going to get stuck on anything, caught on anything, ripped in any way, because this is just fabric, which is nice. So that's what I have going on. So now I want to announce the giveaway. Yay! So uh, what I'm, uh, what you have to do for the giveaway. Number one, be a subscriber of this channel. So if you're not already subscribed, just go ahead and click that subscribe button. It's super easy. So be a subscriber of the channel. Number two, comment down below one thing that you would like to make this fall. So it could be knit, crochet, sewing, weaving, um, perler beads, <laughs> anything. But what's one thing you would like to make this fall? And it could be like a wish list, bucket list thing that you've been wanting to make for a long time, or it could just be something um, you're making for Christmas gifts or whatever, right? But what's one thing you would like to make this fall? my item is <laughs> more pumpkins <laughs> more pumpkins with um decorative ribbons and different sizes and colors um i'd like to make more pumpkins just because i think they're adorable um but yeah let me know in the comments down below so leave a comment with at least one thing that you would like to make this fall and what I will do is randomly choose from the comments down below one winner and that person will win a bag it matches mine <laughs> uh, to get ready for fall so it is a zipper bag all right lined uh, it has a handle Right, another little spot here you can clip something on and the bottom opens up here it's nice and crisp it's been in a box um, after moving uh, but yes it does have a nice bottom to it again just like mine um, yes so it is plaid and pumpkins and owls and cats and so, yes, this is one of my bags, D Hard House Creations. So you will win a bag. One random person. All you have to do is tell me one thing you would like to make, right? You don't even have to make it or show me that you made it, but something you're thinking about that you would like to make this fall. So um, this giveaway will run through, what do we want to do? Two weeks? One week? Let's do two weeks, two weeks. So September 14th, all right, through September 14th. And then I will announce on the channel who the winner is of the giveaway, all right? Um, and anyone can enter. So United States or otherwise can enter to win this prize. Okay, sweet. goes a sock blocker <laughs> all right so that's my august update you've got two weeks for the giveaway um you'll be seeing tutorial videos from me and next month at the end of september you'll get to see all the things i made in september that i will make in september because it hasn't happened yet anyway <laughs> Um, if you would like more daily doses of what I'm working on, um, go check me out on Instagram. 
uh, Dheart House on Instagram. I'm doing daily posts of things that I'm knitting, occasionally non-knitting posts, but mostly it's knitting or spinning fiber related stuff. Um, also, you can check out my shop on Etsy. I do make bags. I also post knitted items like baby blankets. Uh, so you can check me out on Etsy as well. All this is linked in the description box down below. And again, don't forget to subscribe. I really appreciate um, you folks subscribing, liking the videos, letting me know um, that you like this channel. Really appreciate it. So. I will certainly see you in one month's time, um, if not sooner. So take care, be safe, be well, and enjoy your craft, whatever it may be. Bye!